Hey everyone, yet more depressing news this week after the death of Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts. Apparently Mick told Keith Richards that there'd be no Charlie in the next tour and Keith asked if Smack would still be allowed. But now I guess I'm starting to work out how many drummers are left to die until Ringo becomes the best 60s drummer alive you know, by default. And in the meantime a brand new hearse has been ordered and they're waiting for someone to quote paint it black. Film aficionados of course might remember the song Paint It Black from the end of Full Metal Jacket, Stanley Kubrick's film about Vietnam. But when it comes to depressing war stories in this week we're still talking about the shambles that is the forced withdrawal from Afghanistan. If you ever need to pick me up and feel useless, just remember that it took four presidents 20 years and trillions of dollars to replace the Taliban with the Taliban. The situation is a literal definition for missed opportunities up there with the last season of Game of Thrones or choosing to name that railway HS2 rather than Trainee McTrainface, which was my personal suggestion. Never mind Game of Thrones, though, the only TV show on offer right now is, quote, I'm an Afghan translator, get me out of here. As we've now reached the frankly ghoulish stage of proceedings where those who once helped to keep the peace are now the first in the new government's kill list, a list that is admittedly shorter than it was this time last week, although sadly mostly for sickening and frankly avoidable reasons, this is a Kafka-esque situation whereby the bureaucracy that once lined the pockets of civilian contractors was left behind, thus providing the Taliban with a state-of-the-art database listing the names, addresses and accomplishments of everybody that helped maintain vaguely Western ideals. You know, ideals like being able to go to school, or read Harry Potter, or listen to the aforementioned Rolling Stones. Ironically, the Taliban might quite like some of the Stones' songs, at least near the names, things like Street Fighting Man, Sympathy for the Devil, or Jumping Jack Flash Grenade. Anyway, so how are the Western woke media covering this particular story? They of course hate the army and fighting, but presumably they also dislike the Taliban's views when it comes to liberal feminism. Well, The Guardian has a story about how female chefs in Britain are paid less than men. And apparently someone's talking about the gender politics in the movie Frozen. And apparently Honda's humanoid robot Asimo is the colour white because of racism. Well, there's some real oppression for you, isn't it? Puts Afghanistan into context. There was recently a story about how apparently it's actually wrong to be helping girls in Afghanistan because doing so, quote, maintains a mindset of colonialism. It's referenced as, quote, white saviour complex. You know, the thing is, though, if I was a 12-year-old girl living in the mountains of Afghanistan, I'd be pretty keen for a saviour of any colour, white or otherwise, to come and save me right about now. But then again, I'm a bloke and I own a car, so what would I know? Perhaps those civilians aren't terrified and they're screaming out of joy, like when Taylor Swift or Justin Timberlake take to the stage. You know, Justin Timberlake once sang that song with the line, quote, Don't be so quick to walk away. And it's sad that an 18-year-old disco track makes more sense than anything coming out of the White House right now. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.